What's up guys? Is this Worst Thing Money Canada or aka NPC Movies? So, and this is my top 15 movie of all time. So you know, I've been working for months on that list and I still changed some stuff yesterday because I want to make sure it was the most accurate for you guys. So let's dive in. Number 15 is the movie Rain On Me. And it's not really a movie that a lot of people know, I think. Uh, it's not a movie that a lot of people like, I think. I don't know what happened with me. Uh, it just worked on every point with me. It's with Adam Sandler and Don Chilo. Adam Sandler actually is really good. It's really, and it's a dramatic role, and it worked. And the movie is also, the whole movie, it's not just him. The whole movie is, is really good. The storyline is really clever. I like it a lot. It's, uh, it's a comedy with a lot of drama in it, and I love those type of movies because they make you laugh, they make you cry, they make you go, and everything. It, it's really a good movie, and I was not totally sure to, you know, this is the type of movie that was not in my list, and yesterday I changed my mind. Um, the, the scene near end the movie, uh, when he's in front of the judge, when Adam Sandler is in front of the judge, I'll say no, I will not say more. If some people want to go see it, go see it. I think it really worked. Uh, like an hour 40 minutes of your time and uh, I think it's underrated um, because I really love this film I think it's amazing number 14 it's Gran Torino directed and uh, starring Clint Eastwood and uh, this was awesome the, the storyline the metaphor uh, the story about racism also the story about the China side of the world rising and the American one eh, kind of falling not really falling but kind of falling and uh, the type of character that you're gonna hate and you're gonna love for the exact same reason um, he's racist he don't like his own family he's uh, always grumpy but you're gonna love this man and the end is perfect it's not cliche at all Clint Eastwood you did exactly what he had to do and I was hoping Jersey Boy was like the type kind of sign. Boom, it was bad. But Gran Torino was a masterpiece, and every time I watch it, every time I fall in love with it. Number 13, I'm not gonna spend too much time, it's Fight Club. Fight Club is the type of movie uh, you, have, you have like 10% of the world that hate it, that hate that movie. And there's 95% of smart people. That actually love that movie. You don't have you don't have any in between. You just, you don't have the I don't care or the I just like. It's I love or I hate this movie, and that's maybe something I like about it. It's really clever. Um, I don't have anything to say about it because everybody know everything about it. If you don't know this movie, if you never saw Fuck Club, just go see it and stop watching top fifteen of complete stranger on internet. My number twelve, already number twelve, is The Departed. And the same thing as Fire Club, everybody loved this movie. It used to be way more high, I think it was to be, it used to be number six on my list. Some movie add up, I kind of opened my eyes a little bit about a couple of stuff. I think it's an amazing movie. A lot of people say Mar uh, Martin Scorsese best, I don't agree with that. Uh, I think it's the second best. Uh, it's basically a really, really good movie. I'm not gonna spend too much time because everybody knows this movie, everybody loves this movie. Fire Club and Departed are kind of called classic. Um, you need to watch the movie. You need to watch this film. My number 11 is kind of a strange pick, I guess. Uh, it's When Ari Met Sally. I really love this movie. Um, you know, I, this is one of the first Blu-ray I bought. Maybe, uh, what, four years ago? Because I love that cover. I saw the movie before, I knew I liked it. But that cover just sold me. It was, I think this cover is just amazing. It just won, like, just beautiful. But I started rewatching the movie, and since I think since six months ago, around July, I watched the movie, like rewatched the movie for the first time. And since I've been watching it every two or three weeks, uh, I fell in love with the character again. Billy Crystal was amazing. I don't remember the name of the girl, but I used to hate her, and now I love her. If the movie can do that for me, it means a lot. If a movie can make a movie Overwatch can make me love something I used to hate, that that's a that's a score. Um, there's nothing else you can say, it's just a great movie. And it's not because it's a rom-com. That it shouldn't be on my list. You know, uh, any movie can be on my top uh, 15, top 10, and this movie deserves to be number 11. 
My number 10, uh, a recent movie. Uh, I saw it three times in theater. It's still in theater. It's Enter Stellar. I saw it two times in IMAX and one time in a really good uh, digital screening, just to see the difference. IMAX obviously better. Um, it's It was way higher the first time I saw it. It went down a little bit, obviously. Uh, I actually liked the movie better the second time I watched it. Uh, I think Christopher Nolan is an amazing director, he knows what he's doing. Uh, it's not his best movie, I think The Dark Knight was way better. I think Inception was better. I think the screenplay of Inception was better. I think the, the visual were better on, on Interstellar though. Uh, I think Interstellar is still in my top 10 because it's a more uh, grand movie. I think it's uh, way more ambitious and I like that about the director. It might go out of my top 15 of all time or like in the next year or so. It's just because uh, I think I'm still on the hype of it. I've been waiting for that movie for a long time. Uh, Basically, really, really, really great movie. I stand by, I think I gave it a 9.2 out of 10, and I stand by it. I think it's still worth a 9.2. Basically, let's just cut it. Yeah. I like it, I don't care. I don't care. You don't like it? Good for you. I like it. I think it worth my top 10. It might go out, and people say, oh, you put it in the top 10, it's not even in the top 10 anymore. What are you talking about? It? It's as right now. This top 10 is out right now. And that's right now. It's my top 10. Just gonna take a sip. Mmm. Ugh. Alright. Ugh. Let's try. All Canadian ahead. I'm drinking ginger ale kind of dry. I just realized that I'm wearing a Canadian t shirt, whatever it is. So, next movie, number 9, is the movie Mud with. Matthew McConaughey and I didn't like the Reese Witherspoon side of that story uh, but two boy uh, Matthew McConaughey the island the boat uh, the love kind of like story between the little guy and the little girl he's kind of older and uh, how it relate to the story of Matthew McConaughey and the thing is I watched this movie and the first time I did like it a lot and when the movie had the feeling that Take over me was just amazing. I, I like the movie because the feeling of it, the vibe, is just great, and I love it for that. It's number nine. Number eight is a movie I used to hate, but now I love it because it's my number eight. Obviously, I'm gonna just put this back on because my hair are not really beautiful, so I need to put something to hide it. I used to hate Drive, and now I love Drive, and um. The thing is, I most people watch Drive, loved it, then went and see La La Only God Forgive, and didn't like it because it was too different, and they were expecting a Drive-like movie. Well, I didn't watch Drive right away because I was moving and I had time, and I forgot about it. So I watched Only God Forgive when it came out, and then it reminded me of Drive, and I went and watched Drive. And I was let down. I didn't even finish the movie because I was so bored with it. And uh, one of my friends actually bought the, the, the Blu-ray just for, because she liked it so much. She was like, you need to rewatch this. You need to understand. Like, it was just not the right time to watch it. And she bought the Blu-ray. I watched it. And I love it. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's number eight. Uh, since I studied cinema, I really like it. Like, uh, stunning. Uh, stunning. Stuntman and everything. Um, I think it worked well. The frog and uh, scorpion story at the end just wrapped up the movie perfectly. And the, the, the thing is, the music uh, is not used as just you know, oh, let's 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 put a song while this car is going away. No, yeah, the, the movie actually serve. Uh, sorry, the music actually serve the movie, and that I like it. If you have all those tools around you. Just don't throw them away, just use them to make your picture even better. Now, number seven is actually a re really, really, really recent movie. It's Birdman. And I saw Birdman three times since uh, it came out in the last few weeks, basically. The first time, I liked it. The second time, I was alone in the theater, and I loved it. And the third time, I loved it even more. This is, the thing is, 
this character of Birdman, you just want to know always more about him. You just want this movie to never end. It's just so captivating to see. Edward Norton was just so funny. He was uh, he was easy to hate, but you love to hate him. Uh, all Zach Galifikas, Galifikas, he was amazing. Uh, I think the story was beautiful. Screenplay was amazing. Amazing the storyline was just perfect. Um, uh, even even like I said, when you have all those tools that you can use, the guy, the director, say, you know what, we're gonna make that movie look like it's one shot. Try that. I'm doing a five minute video about the movie. I cannot even, you know, I need to cut all the time. Da -da 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 -da. This is amazing what he did. The, the music, so simple, but so amazing. It worked. This movie worked. It's my number seven. And I think it deserve it. I think it's amazing. I'll think it stay there. It might go up actually this one. You know, Interstellar may go down. This one I think it'll go up. Number six, uh, my favorite Tarantino movie. Uh, a lot of people uh, think, I mean a lot of people are, they are right. Pulp Fiction is a masterpiece. I saw Pulp Fiction the first time when I was 16 in cinema school. And then I uh, watched Kill Bill 1, Kill Bill 2, The Lord's Bastard, Django. Um, all those movies. And I love all of them. I love all of them. But Reservoir Dogs is the true masterpiece. Pulp Fiction is good. Pulp Fiction is a masterpiece. But I think Reservoir Dog is way better. For me, it's just a way better story. For the first minute, when they talk, start talking about Like a Virgin, for no reason, I don't even understand why that came into Tarantino mind. But you're a genius, man. This is this was amazing. This is my favorite Tarantino movie. I don't think any of, I mean, Django was near, English Bastard was near, Fall Fiction was near. They all really good. Some of them masterpiece, but for me, Reservoir Dog is just way up there, way up there, and that's why it's my number six of all time. Number five is The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight came out uh, 18th of July, the day of my birthday, and I remember when I was young, I mean, was young, it was I think 2008, the 18th of July, 2008, I said to my dad, I want to go see The Dark Knight with my friend for my birthday, we went to see it, and it was amazing. I saw The Dark Knight 10 times in theater, that's the movie I saw the most. Uh, I kept all the cinema ticket for myself. I saw it three times in IMAX, three times by myself, and with all my friends and my dad too. Um, it, 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 it's been my favorite movie of all time for at least two, or two to three years, I'll say. I've been defending that movie for so long because yes, a lot of people like it, but when a lot of people like something, a lot of people hate it for just hipster reason. And uh, I've been defending that movie for a long time because, oh, it's a comic book movie, it's a super movie, you cannot be the US movie all the time. I don't want to say it, but you can go to hell. It was my best movie of all time. And every time I watch it, I am torn. My top 15 is just like moving around because I realize every time I watch it how good it is. Sometimes I forgot and I get carried away by other movie, but. It will always have a special place in my heart. The movie came out the day of my birthday, but for right now, as today, it's my number five. My number four is Only God Forgive. And uh, like I said before, uh, I saw Only God Forgive before Drive, and I loved Only God Forgive. The visual, just stunning, jaw-dropping, just uh, an experience. I think I've never seen a movie like that. Uh, the only thing I, I, I was thinking about when the movie ends is The Shining. For me, and uh, that's a bold statement, but I'll say it, I don't care. For me, Only God Forgive is The Shining of our years. And, you know, on, on, on Rotten Tomatoes, it got 40% rate. And I can't even believe that. I, I, don't, I don't know how, what happened there. But, you know, The Shining was not really loved when it first came out by Critic, and I don't care about it. Only God Forgive, I think for me, is just, it's a masterpiece. 
I think give it 10 years or 20 years, I think it will become a cult classic as Fight Club or The Shining or something like that. I truly believe that. But the thing is, every time I watch this movie I want to create, I think it's, it's not a movie, it's, it's a, a, a moving painting. I think it's, 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 an, it's full of art. I think it's, it's beautiful, it's stunning, jaw-dropping. I think it's not a film, it's a moving painting. It stuck with me for days and week and everything I create, if I, I write down a screenplay, if I paint, if I draw something, it get affected and influenced by this movie. Number three. Her. Uh, so I was watching AMC Movie Talk, like a lot of you probably, uh, one day and Elisha Malone said that, uh, I think the question was like, what, what, which, which movie do you think in 10 years will be a cult classic or something like that in 20 years? And Elisha Malone said, her. And I was at HMV two days after that. I saw the DVD for ten, uh, the Blu-ray for ten dollars. I bought it right away. Watch it. Fall in love with it. Fall in love. Visually. Wow. Jorgen Felix. I think I think it's so clever. Um, beautiful, colorful. I think it's simple. I think this should have won best movie at the Oscar. I don't remember which year and which movie won. I don't care. Whatever. This movie was the best movie of the year. Number two. My favorite Scorsese movie of all time. And I think for me it's best. It's Wolf of Wall Street. Like I said, The Departed is an amazing movie, great movie, good movie, whatever you want. For me, Wolf of Wall Street is a masterpiece. And the thing is, it's a three hour long movie. It could have been five or six hour long. I wouldn't. I didn't want this movie to stop. It was just so funny, clever, well done. Leonardo DiCaprio. What well, well, you can say? This this was his best um, acting he ever did for me. And I think uh, I don't think he should have win. I think uh, Matthew McConaughey deserved his Oscar. Uh, I think it's really sad for DiCaprio because he had a big shot at it. Um, but I think. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street is just, uh, the day the Blu-ray came out, I did four different stores to find it because I was, it was sold out almost everywhere and I found it at HMV after about, you know, four, four or five stores, I don't remember. And uh, I watched it every night for a week. I was crying of laughing. I was just tearing up. And my stomach and my actual, every little part of my face hurt because I was laughing so hard. And then I watched it again. Jonah Hill, the directing, the color, every little thing is a hit. And that's my number two. And it's, it's, since I saw the movie, I put it on my top 15, it's been just moving up. Just moving up every single time. Maybe one day it's going to be my number one, I don't know. But right now it's my number two, and that's a 10 out of 10 movie. My last movie, my favorite movie of all time. I'm just gonna place this here. Let, let me let me make myself a little bit more presentable for that. I'll just drink Ooh. Uh, a little bit of Canada Dry. So it's time for my favorite movie of all time. My favorite movie of all time. Bastard in the basket. I drink your milkshake. Bastard in the basket. There will be blood. <sighs> I bought that movie when I was about 17, 18. I was every I was at, in high school. Every time on my way back to home, we always um, stop at uh, a blockbuster type of store but like a Canadian one and you know I was always a buying movie all the time and I saw this collector edition of uh, Devil Be Bought um, and I, I liked the cover so much it was twenty dollars I think and I bought it right away without knowing anything about it I was young I didn't know who Daniel Daniels was I didn't know who the director was I didn't know nothing about it I just liked the cover so much I wanted so I bought it, went home, watched it, didn't like it, put it in the pile, forgot about it. Then I moved. 
I moved to Ottawa um, a year ago. First movie I took out of the box, put in a Blu-ray player, watch it, loved. And since I've been watching this movie multiple times, I've been buying multiple edition. Um, this is my favorite movie of all time because this was the perfect character to show everything can do. I like the movie uh, Lincoln. I like a lot of his movie, but There Will Be Blood is visually perfect. Acting, perfect. Storyline, perfect. Dialogue, over perfect. I just think about just the character and it's just, I'm, for me, it's, it, this is a real masterpiece. It's, it's something that should be seen by anybody that want to be related to cinema. If you didn't see that movie, I put myself on my knees. I, I do, I don't, I, I almost want to email my copy to you. This is my favorite movie of all time. It was my top 15. I'll say it really quick. I'll, I'll put a list on the screen. So really quick, There'll Be Blood, Wolf of Wall Street, Her, Only God Forgive, The Dark Knight, Reservoir Dog, Birdman, Drive, Mud, Interstellar, When Harry Meets Sally, The Departed, Fight Club, to, uh, Gran Torino, sorry, and Rain Over Me. These are, those are all my, my top 15 favorites of all time. And that's, that's for today. And I stand by it for today. And I hope you like this video. Uh, that's a, like a type of differencing of what I normally do. But I hope you liked it. And my next video is going to be my Blu-ray collection video. I'm going to show all my Blu-ray. Should be in about a week. It's already been shot. I'm just trying to uh, edit uh, it to make it a little bit more fun. So uh, I'll work on that. Um, I see you soon, I guess. Have a good one.